greetings. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. We have great, exciting information to share with you tonight. Um, but first, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Patty Cash, and I am the owner of Magic Cruises and Tours, which we'll show on the next slide. I see you guys out there. There we are. Oh, it's so good to see you all out there. Thank you for joining us today. So uh, there's me, Patty, and we have Marsha with us today, who's going to be uh, watching the questions and, and answers in the chat box, and Amanda Smith is with our celebrity cruises she's our, our sales manager for this area and we worked with amanda for many many years uh, both amanda and i have been to the galapagos islands and i can say for me it's one of the most remarkable destinations that i've ever ever been to uh, i can't go further though without giving a big shout out to our great staff here at magic cruises and tours we've been located in downtown worthington since 1988 we're still having a lot of fun and we're here to help you with all of your vacation plans. So we've got this wonderful, great destination that we're gonna to talk to you about. And for most of you, I can say you have not been to the Galapagos Islands. So we're gonna be exploring some uncharted territory. Again, please shot your questions down in the little chat box down at the bottom. And we'll try to get to those at the end of the presentation. But for now, I'd like to get started by turning it over to Amanda Smith with Celebrity to introduce herself and also uh, tell us a little bit about what we're going to learn tonight. All right. Thank you so much, Patty. So appreciative um, that you asked me to come here tonight to talk about this amazing destination. Um, the Galapagos Islands, um, I know we, we've spoken about this many times, but it, it is one of the, the truly most unique destinations that you could possibly travel to. So tonight on the agenda, um, we are going to be talking about specifically where is the Galapagos Islands, um, so where you will be traveling to. Uh, how celebrity travels in the Galapagos Islands. So just more about celebrity in general and specifically celebrity in Galapagos. And of course the itinerary um, options that are available to you um, in these islands and then what you can expect. So this is totally a different type of vacation experience than if you've sailed with celebrity cruises or just cruised in general before. It's definitely a different experience um, than anything that you've experienced before on those on those other cruise ships. Um, and then we'll go through some offers that we have. Great. So let's go ahead and start um, just by telling you Galapagos Islands, they're open. Um, we have been sailing, Celebrity's been sailing in the Galapagos since July 4th of 2021. Um, I, actually, we've been sailing there for a lot longer than that, but after our pause um, from the pandemic, we started sailing again on July 4th um, with our brand new ship, Flora, and then uh, Expedition um, started sailing a few weeks after that in July. And we also have Exploration, a third ship that is sailing there. So we have three vessels total sailing in the Galapagos Islands. Breathe again. I don't think there was any volume in that video, but nice pictures. And it's yeah, like sorry it's about awesome. that. That was uh, some technical difficulties with our volume. So we'll kind of skip through. So I have a few other videos, but unfortunately, it seems like the volume is not, um, or technology is not cooperating with me tonight. So I apologize for that because it, it is a wonderful video and it just talks about how the Galapagos are ready to to see you again um, and all those beautiful animals um, that are ready to um, be seen. But I do want to um, just talk a little bit more about Celebrity Cruises and who we are. Um, we've been sailing in the Galapagos for over 15 years, and I'm really proud of um, what we do in the Galapagos Islands. We, we offer an 
um, eco luxury product. Um, and we really do a lot for both the community and the environment. Um, here is Luis, uh, which was a video. And the one thing I wanted to point out with Luis um, is that he works as a maitre d'. He is from the Galapagos Islands. He's from Santa Cruz, which is the um, only inhabited island in the Galapagos. And he had, um, the Galapagos had put the video together with Luis just to highlight, um, you know, what, what, uh, is available out there to do um, in the Galapagos and the types of things that um, is available for the uh, the um, inhabitants of the Galapagos Islands. And he had worked really hard. His father was a farmer and he had gotten to know Celebrity Cruises through his father um, because we do uh, frequent the uh, vendors on the islands uh, to supply supply us with various products on board. Um, so some other ways that we uh, contribute to the Galapagos Islands is um, through the Galapagos Fund. So this is a fund that is strictly uh, done with our guests. Um, it's it's completely voluntary but a hundred percent of the proceeds we don't ever charge any sort of processing fees or anything goes straight to the galapagos and so far we're really proud that we've raised um, 1.5 million dollars and that's all from our guests and just how much they love the galapagos and how much they want to um, contribute to help uh, keep the islands and preserve the islands for future generations another thing that we've done is uh, since we've started sailing there we have um, had our guests, again, we partner with our guests and guests love doing this. It's on every trip. We have the guests uh, plant a tree. So we donate a tree, the guests get to plant it. We've done over 50,000 plants um, thus far and it's just a re uh, reforest station, <laughs> reforestation having an issue saying that word. <laughs> um, because a lot of, when you go to Santa Cruz, you'll learn that a lot of, um, a lot of plants that are not native to the area have come in and they've invaded somewhat. So it's really important to keep the Galapagos um, as preserved as possible. So we wanna plant some of the native um, trees and, and areas to keep the, the islands secure. We've also done a ton of community product projects, um, including we have um, opened up a special needs art studio where um, children from the Galapagos Islands that are special needs, they make artwork and um, we opened up this wonderful art facility where they can sell their artwork. Um, we've also uh, have community fields. We have a, um, uh, a tourism school that costs nothing for Galapagos Islands um, natives to go to. So these are just a few things that we do to, to, to give back um, to the community of the Galapagos Islands. And Important. then of course the environmental part of it. So all of our ships um, are completely decked out, eco-friendly. Um, these are just a few examples of what we have on board. I, I'm one that you'll notice because a lot of these things you won't notice when you're on board the ships. Um, but one that you'll notice is that when you check in, um, you will receive a, a refillable water bottle and you'll see that there are fillable stations all throughout your vessel where you can refill your water bottle. So there's no plastic, there's no um, water bottles. We try to make everything very eco-friendly on board. Okay, so moving on, um, I do want to talk a little bit about um, the difference of sailing with celebrity cruises. So one thing that you'll notice is on these vessels, your main source of transportation to and from the islands is on a tender. Um, and a tender is kind of like a Zodiac. Um, there's a few different names for them, but that is your main transportation to and from the islands. Um, you will have wet landings and dry landings. I'll talk a little bit about that and um, later on in the presentation. Um, but you get to, you also get to go on these um, tenders and you can actually um, float around and experience some of the marine life and get to see some more of the island areas. Um, and I'll talk more about the excursions and what you'll be doing with the tenders in a little bit. Let's see if this video will work. Okay, we'll go ahead and try it. Okay, 
See if you can turn the volume up, maybe. Oh, it's up all the way. The pictures. How's it sound, Patty? I don't think you can hear it, but that's okay. Let's just let it play out. Uh, okay. See if it if it doesn't jerk too much, we can. Uh, Okay, we can't hear Ellen. So if we do want to recap a little bit, maybe about what Ellen was sharing with the group. Yeah, so Ellen's really just talking about um, the Galapagos Islands, how they were formed and why it makes it such a unique experience to visit. And that's kind of what this is talking about right now all the various currents that travel through the Galapagos Islands to make it such a rich um, feeding grounds for the, for the animals. All the, all the animals and marine life, as well as the beautiful birds and above ground and in the ocean. There's our blue-footed booby. Yeah. You will learn so much on this trip. You'll be surrounded by naturalists who will be explaining things along the way and explaining the whole ecosystem there, as well as a unique landscape and all kinds of different wildlife. Phytoplankton's that satisfy uh, the food chain on up the, the ladder. I'm just going to pause it here because um, I'll move on, but since yeah. you guys can't hear it, but, um, but yeah, I mean, Ellen um, Prager, who is the science scientist researcher that we partner with, um, she really has done a great job in helping us um, uh, curate a, an onboard experience. Um, and like Patty said, we, we do have naturalists on board all of our ships. So we'll talk more about um, what's included when you sail with us. So most guests book our 10 night package, 10 or 11 night package. That's um, the most popular. And so I'll talk about that right now. So when I say all inclusive, I mean, it is all inclusive. It's um, completely seamless, fully guided. Uh, we get you on a flight to and from um, the Galapagos Islands. Uh, so essentially what you're looking at is the 10 night packages include your pre and post nights in Quito, which is in Ecuador, your round trip flight from Quito to the Galapagos, a seven night cruise in the Galapagos Islands, all your meals, including room service, all your beverages, all your gratuities, all the onboard programming, all the shore excursions, which are led by Galapagos National Park naturalists, all um, snorkeling equipment if you choose to use that, binoculars, bathrobes, internets included, and of course the entrance fee for the Galapagos National Park and tourist card, um, that's all included as well. So, in the in the um, 10 and 11 night pre and post, um, this is kind of how your um, start of your trip is set up. So you would fly into Quito, Ecuador, and again, it's a super easy flight. Um, I flew from Indianapolis to Miami and it was like a four hour flight from Miami. There's no time difference, no time change in the Galapagos Islands. So it's all on Eastern time, which is fabulous. Um, and then from there, you'll have a, a, um, a celebrity uh, transfer person waiting for you outside of baggage. They'll have your name on a card. You'll get in the car with your bags and um, off you go to the hotel where you'll spend the night. And then the next day, you'll have tours of Quito. I'll get to that in just a second. Oh, nope. Mm -hmm. 
sorry. I'll get to that in just a second of the, uh, the, the rest of the experience, but for now, we'll just kind of do an overview. Um, so all the transfers are included. Like I said, the, the person is waiting for you at the airport in Quito to transfer you to the hotel. Um, and then all the other things that I mentioned was included as well. The other option that you can choose is a 16 night package. So this would include the Quito experience that I um, was just referring to earlier, as well as um, Machu Picchu. So that's a huge, huge um, bonus for people that are down in South America and they wanna do the uh, Machu Picchu, they kind of just wanna get it all in um, as much and as they want uh, can possibly. So this includes, again, it's all fully escorted, um, Machu Picchu experience, the Sacred Valley, Lima, um, and it's all uh, escorted and gratuities and all of your um, hotel stays are covered as well. Yeah, that merely makes a seamless package. And, um, you know, again, Machu Picchu is on the bucket list for many people I know. So that's a win-win on that one. But yeah. the 10 to 11 night, I think, is probably the most popular that we sell. And it's just wonderful the way that Celebrity puts it together. And it really is seamless. It, it makes it very wonderful, smooth sailing from beginning to end. Uh, but a lot of times people will say, well, I've heard of the Galapagos Islands, but where are the Galapagos Islands? Well, we have these little uh, maps here to take a peek at, located about 600 miles off the west coast of Ecuador. And so you can see there's Peru and there's uh, the little dot over there to the side. It's just a little bunch of islands off of the coast of Ecuador. And um, as Amanda said, and maybe on the next slide, you can see, you know, just straight down. So you're, when you're flying um, uh, north-south direction, we're not having a bunch of jet lag, um, like we're going to Europe, for example, or Australia in the other direction. So um, that does make it pretty seamless. Um, I, I know recently when we did it, we flew into Atlanta. It's about an hour and a half from Columbus to Atlanta and then four hour, uh, five hour flight, I think from Atlanta down to, uh, to Quito. But um, then those little islands there, you can see where Baltra is pointing. And those are the Galapagos Islands that are located right on the equator and it's interesting because it's like, well, the Galapagos Islands, uh, there's 19 islands out there, 42 little islets um, as they arose from the sea and they're all volcanic uh, eruptions and they're just amazing diversity of wildlife and, and landscape and so forth that's waiting for you. So let's take a look and see what, what goes next. So this is um, just where you'll be staying in Quito. So going into a little bit more depth with that, um, after you're picked up at the airport, you get transferred to the JW Marriott and you stay at this beautiful hotel. Um, it has uh, a lot of restaurants and shopping right inside here, um, but you don't necessarily need to do that because you'll have tours um, included uh, the second day that you're in, in, the, in Quito and we'll um, also include some meals for you as well. So we'll take you out to a, a, um, a really nice restaurant and then we'll spend the night again. And um, and this is just another picture. And I, I can't say enough about Quito. Um, it's such a beautiful city. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's, um, it's a very, I thought it was a very cosmopolitan type city, but had so much history to it as well. Um, so lots of shopping opportunities. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful city. So then we will transport you on technically on day three. So you land, you spend two nights at JW Marriott and then the, in the morning, we'll transport you back to the airport in Quito and we will fly you over in a plane much like this one. Um, and it's a private, it's private, it's just celebrity guests that you're with. And we'll um, head straight to the Galapagos Islands to Baltra. And you see here this picture, um, this is pretty much exactly what it is. You get off on the jetway, it's a very small airport. 
Um, it's uh, the terminal itself. You, we, Celebrity does have the VIP area. So um, once we land, you get checked in, um, get your passport stamped by Galapagos National Park, which is always fun. And um, then you, you uh, head into the VIP area where they have snacks and drinks. And then you um, get in your, your coach and head out to the vessel. So and the, the trip begins. And this is just a picture of the islands, um, the beautiful islands here. So we do have a few different itineraries depending on um, which ship you're on. And a lot of the itineraries will visit, it's the same island we'll visit, it's just a different part of the island. So the Galapagos National Park obviously to, um, you know, have a lot of restrictions in place to preserve the islands and keep them as um, as they are currently. That's so, cool. yeah. yeah, pristine. So what they've done is they have limited us to only visit one particular stop um, within a two week window. We can only visit at one time. So therefore we have to kind of balance out these itineraries with these three vessels to these different areas. So all the areas, um, uh, all the, the islands are all kind of different in their own way. And we'll see some examples of that, um, in a, in a minute, but, um, but the itineraries themselves, I mean, you get to have that full experience with all of the itineraries. Um, yeah. yeah, I would say the only difference is, um, if, if there's a specific animal you want to see that may be limited to the island that you're traveling to. So that we'll would be the, look, yeah, we'll take a look at that. We'll, we'll send you the wildlife calendar so you can have some of those kind of details, uh, at your fingertips as well. The one thing I just want to mention on that slide, just to give people a little bit of a context. The Galapagos Islands, they stretch about 174 miles from east to west. So that's the, the frame of reference for, for the distance that are uh, that you're going to be traveling within. Okay. Yeah. And you could see Baltra there in the middle um, with Santa Cruz. So that is the only inhabited island. All the other ones are uninhabited. Okay, so now moving into the good stuff of, of what we do and, and what the experience you can expect on Celebrity. Um, so all of our uh, ex all of our excursions are done with uh, uh, Galapagos National Park certified guides and naturalists, and they are all limited to 10 guests. So there, there's no need to worry that, you know, you're gonna be on these islands with 20, 30 other people, and you're not gonna be able to hear what the naturalist is saying. We keep everything very small, very intimate. So you do have that one-on-one -on -one experience with, with the naturalist on board. Um, and a lot of the naturalists have uh, various expertise and, and various interests that they themselves hold. And I found that when I was on, um, I, I love that, you know, each excursion that I, that I chose, you know, I could get a different naturalist and they just brought uh, to light some different things so that maybe the other naturalist um, brought something else to light. So it's, it's interesting to get kind of their point of view on things, mm -hmm. um, but either way, they're super knowledgeable on all the animals, all the islands, how they were formed. Um, all of that stuff is all consistent. They all uh, know that stuff and understand that stuff. But some of them, for example, were more um, photographer focused and some of them were more history focused. So they just brought some some different unique things to, to light. We had a bird expert or anthologist, I believe is what they are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because even bird it's watching. it's funny when you yeah when you're not when you're on these islands. I mean, I'm not a bird watcher, or birder, or whatever you call it, but um, you know they just they point these things out and it, and you just see it for yourself in real life person. All these different things that they're pointing out, and you're like, wow, this is amazing that I'm experiencing this. Mm -hmm. So these are some things that you can expect when you're on board um, or I guess off the ship. Um, we have snorkeling um, options available. There's uh, explorations, uh, as I mentioned, on the tenders or the uh, coastal explorations. We also have kayaking options available on some of the excursions. And then uh, beach excursions. So if you wanna go out and go for a swim on a beach, we do have that available. 
Again, these aren't available on each island. So just, um, you know, specifically, and we'll talk a little bit more about how that's all decided and how you figure that all out. Um, and then hiking, that's most days uh, you'll have some hiking options available for you. And I like that you said options because I think it's important when people hear hiking, they think, oh no, I can't hike up mountains and things, but there's a variety of different degrees of hiking and gentle walking paths <laughs> uh, versus things that are maybe a little bit, a little bit more uh, robust. But. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is a picture of Santa Cruz and in Santa Cruz, you'll visit this um, really nice farm that has these beautiful tortoises that um, come to visit. And these, this area of Santa Cruz is called the Highlands. So while Santa Cruz is populated, the Highlands part is a little bit um, less dense with population. So these tortoises that you see here, they have all adapted. You can see they have the long neck and the concave shell. Um, they've adapted to find the food in the Highlands um, in the higher ground area of Santa Cruz. Uh, and that's something that's unique to that island itself. And then Ferdinina Island, which is one of my favorites. I have a picture in a little bit. I'll show you um, one of my personal photos from when I went. This is the youngest island um, in the Galapagos. Uh, I, you know, it's like 10 million years old or something. So <laughs> super young. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the island just has so many of these marine iguanas on it. Um, you literally have to, you know, try to find a path to get through them. Um, and it's, you can see they just blend in as well because they're, they're camouflaged. But this, this is super unique because these marine iguanas on this island are the only marine iguanas that you can find in the world. And it's because of this particular island that they've had to adapt to become marine iguanas. Um, and this is all stuff that you'll learn there, but it's, it's just really interesting because they, they have to go into the water to find their food. Uh, most iguanas are land iguanas and they can find all this um, food on the land, but because this is all lava rocks, they have to go in the water to find their food. Then when they come out of the water, they do these little sneezes and that's sneezing out all of the ocean salt water, the salts from the ocean. So um, I <laughs> disgustingly <laughs> called it sea snot because I have videos of them sneezing. You can hear them sneezing when you're there. And I, I was showing my children, I'm like, oh, they're sea snotting all over us. <laughs> but it's it's actually really cute when they do it. Um, so it's, it's very fun, very unique um, and an experience that you won't forget. So these are the cormorants. The cormorants are all over the world, so nothing unique there. However, the cormorants and the Galapagos have adapted. They are the only flightless cormorants that are found. Um, so they have lost their ability to fly. They have no natural predator um, and they find their food again in the sea. So this is just another way that Galapagos Islands animals have adapted to the area that they're in. Evolution. Evolution, that's right. And all the boobies. So this is a booby picture of the Nazak, um, the red-footed, and the, the infamous blue-footed boobies. So the um, these three boobies are all found in the Galapagos Islands. Um, if you're lucky, you may find them all on one island, but most times you are not able to do that. You have to visit different islands to see all three of them. But the Nazak booby, um, you can recognize that because it has that cute little mask by its eyes. Um, the red-footed booby, of course, hence the name, the red foot. But what I love about it is its little be blue beak. Um, beautiful. These are a little bit more shy, so you'll find them in trees, um, hanging out on limbs. And then the, um, the blue-footed booby. So these are the blue feet, beautiful, beautiful animals, uh, birds, and they have this fun, um, mating dance that they do. So if you're there at the mating season, you'll see them do these really neat dances. But the blue feet, uh, of course, attracts their mates. So the bluer the feet, the better chance they have. There you go, Beautiful. right there. Yeah. <laughs> And the albatross. So the albatross, um, they do migrate. So they are not uh, um, in the Galapagos year round. They arrive in March or April and stay until about October, November. Um, but the really cool thing about the albatross is that they mate for life. So from the incubation period of the chick 
um, all the way to, you know, feeding, um, having the chick grow up, teaching them how to fly. The male and the female are both involved with raising that chick. So I think that's really kind of cool. And then Gardner Bay. Um, so this stop is, uh, I mean, it really does look exactly like this picture. Um, my, my experience was very much similar to this. It's a beautiful beach. Uh, you'll get to hang out and kind of swim in the ocean, snorkel if you want to, but it's just a, a nice place to just sit and relax and just kind of have a, you know, a little, um, a snip of a beach vacation, if you will, but uh, with with our friends, the sea lions. So we had a sea lion just hang out from the moment that we got um, off of our tender until the the moment. I mean, the whole time he just hung out with us. So uh, this, though, I want to point out. This is a good example of a wet landing. So we, um, as I mentioned, you'll have dry landings. A lot of them will be wet landings. So by wet landing, I just mean to get off that zodiac, you will um, you will need to put your feet in about uh, I would say five inches of water or so. Oh. Um, so it's not it's not hard. It's just you got to make sure you have the right footwear. <laughs> you don't want to bring your your tennis shoes. So the wet landings for the most part won't be hiking days, um, but or strenuous hiking days I should say. Um, like this one is a beach day. Beautiful. And the sea lions, again, they're so playful, so fun. None of none of these animals have any fear of humans. Um, you may be lucky enough to have one play with you. They will certainly um, swim by you, at least, at the very least. But if they play with you, like you see here with blowing bubbles, that would be pretty pretty amazing. Um, but you'll see them everywhere. From in Santa Cruz, they were on the park benches. I mean, they they just hang out. They're They're one of us. <laughs> And these are just some of my personal photos. So I like to put these in here just to kind of give you some some um, real life experience, I guess, to show you that when you go to the Galapagos, you can go away with, with photos that look like they are, um, you know, these amazing, amazingly shot photos and I was shooting them with my camera. So um, the, it's, you really can see these animals. They're right up close to you. This is the red-footed booby. I saw, I have about a zillion of these photos with different birds all around. Um, now this is a tortoise, but this is a different one than what we had seen earlier on Santa Cruz. So there is another island and, and unlike Santa Cruz, these tortoises, first of all, they're gigantic. These are where you find the really, really large, large tortoises. Um, and they are not as used to humans. So while they're not scared of us, they, um, they just don't have, you can't get as close to them. Um, as you can on Santa Cruz. So for example, this guy right here, uh, they can't see very well, thankfully, but if you get too close, they'll hiss and they'll bring their head into their shell. So oh. yeah, so you have to be really, um, you know, quiet and uh, stealth-like when you walk around them. But, They're more shy. They're a little yes. more shy. Yes, but, exactly. They live like 150 years. I mean, they, they can really be ancient turtles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and this is just on the, the bird island that we went to. This is just a Nezek, um, and we got to see some babies. So that was so cute. It's a little fluff ball. This is a photo from um, snorkeling. So on one of the snorkeling endeavors that I did, um, and I'll again, I'll go through like a, a snapshot of a day, a sample day. Um, but snorkeling is is one of the options that you can do. And this was just a complete surprise to me. I've never seen a, an area with with so many um, starfish and you could see they're all different colors. And it was just, I looked out and it was just for miles and miles. I mean, this is just a frame shot of the, the video, the GoPro video that I had, but it was so cool and they're huge. I mean, they were very large, but like much bigger than my hand. And penguin, so little penguins were jumping in the water and swimming around and kind of scared me a little bit, but it was very fun. And this is on uh, Ferdinina Island. So you can see here 
the marine iguana, they really do blend in. Um, but when you're there, you can tell where they are. But in photos, it's hard to spot them. But you can kind of see one off to the um, right hand side there in the in the gravel. And you also, if you look at the lines in the gravel, you can kind of see like the little lines. That's from their tail, and that is all over the island. You see their little tail tail marks. So their footprints, if you will. Tail trails. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and then this is my friendly sea lion that came and jumped in after me and startled me for a second because I was scared it was a shark. And while I did see a shark and he was very friendly and far away, thankfully, because I am scared of sharks. But um, this little guy, you can see, I think he just wanted his picture taken. <laughs> He's, he looks very proud. So a sample day. Um, so this is what a, uh, one of the itineraries that we have and a sample day on, on any itinerary. This isn't specific to this itinerary. So what you would do is you wake up, you go to breakfast. Um, breakfast and lunch are both uh, buffet style and then dinner is served. Um, so you would go to breakfast um, and then we'd be at our first stop. You'd go out at the excursion that you chose for the day. Um, and then you would come back and typically there is a snorkel experience available if you would like to do that. Sometimes there's a kayak experience available. Um, so either one of those, you would have signed up the night before for either one of those. You would put your wetsuit on and go out and do that experience. Come back on board. It's probably about 1130 at that point in time. Um, and you go and you have your lunch. I would usually take a nap and then around three o'clock you're at your second stop where you go out and do the exploring there. And then you get back on board, um, have dinner. And then that evening, everyone gathers around in the lounge area and the naturalists all get together and they have a nice um, slideshow presentation. Um, they maybe talk about some things that everybody saw that day and some unique experiences that people had. And then they'll go through uh, the itinerary for the next day and they'll talk about the various island um, destinations that they're traveling to the next day. And then they'll talk about some options that you can choose. So hiking wise, they always will have a, what we call like a low intensity and a high intensity. So the low intensity, you'll see the same things. It'll just be, you'll hike for a mile on even terrain. Whereas the high intensity will maybe be a mile and a half, but it'll be hilly terrain or rocky terrain or something like that. So, um, but you'll see the exact same things. You're all getting off in the same same island and, and seeing the same stuff. It's just different uh, experiences and how you're seeing it. And then, um, and then, like I said, from there, you can choose the optional ones if you'd like to do the snorkeling, if they have kayaking available, that sort of thing, or the coastal explorations. Occasionally, we do have those as, as well. Yep. So the main thing here, too, just overall, is that you're going to be going to a couple different island areas each day. So not just one per day. You're going to go to probably two per day. Yep. It's it's very busy. It's like I said, it's a different experience than a regular cruise. This is truly an exploration type of experience. You are there to explore and to see and to do as much as you can. Um, so these are the three vessels that we have: the expedition, the flora, and the exploration. And the exploration. So this is the smallest um, of our vessels. This is like a sixteen passenger. Um, you can see here it has a, a lot of nice public spaces, but really this is meant to be more of, you know, kind of a public space. I think Patty said, you know, she likes to get people that, uh, I, well, if you want to talk to it, Patty. Get oh, well, you have a family group that's looking at this that's just a family of 16. It's like you're going to be their own private yacht for yeah. the duration of their trip. And I think that sounds awesome. That would beat any family reunion I've had. <laughs> Uh, you know, group of friends traveling together. Yeah. And just, you know, if you want to be among just a few, a few other folks, that's a great choice. Yeah, absolutely. If you can get 16 of your friends um, that want to go to the Galapagos, I mean, who doesn't? Um, this is a great op option to have a private vessel. 
Uh, we do have alfresca dining, outdoor dining available on all three of the vessels. So, um, as well as indoor dining. The Celebrity Expedition. So this is the original vessel that we had, um, you know, 15 plus years ago. And this is, this was originally built uh, to be a hundred passenger vessel. We currently are only um, housing 48 guests on here. And the great thing about this is that there are 48 guests, but we still staff it for 100 passengers. So we have 55 plus crew and 48 guests. So um, talk about good service, right? So the, <laughs> um, again, we have a lot of open outdoor spaces for you to relax and, and just enjoy the beautiful scenery that we're at, the outdoor dining areas. And then this is the lounge area I was talking about earlier where you gather together and see that presentation and, and choose your excursions and listen to the naturalist. Um, so this is, of course, this is not just for that, that type of thing. Um, we also have a, a different evening, you know, movie nights and trivia nights and things like that. So, um, little fun things after afterwards, if you're wanting to hang out and do that, that sort of thing as well. And then this is our dining restaurant. So, um, I, I like to point out here because I feel like this looks super formal. The Galapagos Islands is a very informal destination. You do not have to bring your dresses and your nice shoes and your nice pants. Um, this is an exploration destination, so shorts are completely fine at dinner. Um, we do not mind and we expect that. So do not do not worry about packing um, a million different types of, of outfits for this vacation. This is all casual. Um, exploration type of, of gear. And then the accommodations here, and you can see most of the accommodations do include a balcony. Um, we do have some that don't, but um, the majority of the, the accommodations that we have have a balcony included with your room. And then the flora. So this is kind of our pride and joy. She just was delivered to us in 2019. And we had built this specifically for the Galapagos. This is the only vessel that you will find in the world that was built with Galapagos in mind. So built just for Galapagos. And the reason why that's important is because what is in, inside the ship and also um, uh, the viewing areas that we have available, I mean, all of that is, is built just so you can see these beautiful destinations. I'm going to show this, even though I know you probably can't hear it, just because the, um, I want you to be able to see this, the ship. Marina off the bow. So this is our godmother, former president of worldwide WWF. All it's an all suite ship. So every accommodation is a suite. And as I mentioned, everything is meant to be viewed from the, to the outside. This is super important. They make it so easy to get on and off of that um, Zodiac. In the lab, we'll talk about all this in a little bit. And we've already won awards with this vessel, um, even though it, it, you know, just started sailing in 2019 and unfortunately had to pause for a minute. Um, but then we started sailing back again, 4th of July last year. Um, so this lab is available for our guests to use. This is um, just a really unique area uh, for, for you all to experience the science um, of the Galapagos Islands. And then the glamping. So this is another really fun, unique thing um, that you have the opportunity if you'd like to, to do this. This is an overnight experience. So this is actually, this is extra. So this is not an inclusive. And the only reason it's extra is because we only have two of these. So unfortunately we wouldn't be able to have everybody do this on the vessel. But what this includes is from sunset, sunset to sunrise. Um, you have dinner out here. There's campfire themed um, delights and cocktails. There's a naturalist that will um, kind of hang out with you. 
uh, during a star stargazing session. So remember, you're at the equator, so you get to see the northern and southern hemisphere. Um, so that uh, the naturalist is really there to kind of point out the various constellations to you. So, so cool. Um, actually, my mother-in-law has a really neat constellation app. So since there's good Wi-Fi on board, that would probably be a good thing to, to download as well. It's I think it's constellations and um, planets. Um, anyways, that you get was, to... Yeah, that would be awesome. That's my yeah. kind of camping. Right, exactly. <laughs> the stars. Oh, what a unique experience. Now yeah. you sign up for this on board, and this is, as Amanda said, one of the only thing that's not included. Yes, and you sleep there. Um, that turns into a, a double bed, and you wake up, and you have a private breakfast um, before you leave to get ready for your, your adventures of the day. So just a fun, unique experience. Um, and so I guess now we're at the offers. So this is uh, the this is what we have going on right now. So we are currently offering through the um, through February, twenty percent off your Galapagos vacation experience, and with that ten night package, flights to Quito are on us round trip air up to seven hundred and fifty dollars. Um, which should get you to Quito um, because Quito is not a suit. I don't think it's a super expensive place to fly into. So flights essentially are on celebrity. Um, and then on top of that, we also have a great magic um, cruises and tours offer of a hundred dollar gift card. So not only will you save 20% and have your flights paid for to get into Quito, but you'll also get a hundred dollars to spend on, um, I don't know, maybe to get some some cool gear to outfit yourself for the trip. <laughs> maybe get a GoPro for yourself. There yeah. you go, a GoPro, exactly. $750 per person to fly with celebrities. So, you know, unless you want something unique or business class air, uh, that still goes towards your credit when we make your flights with celebrities. And, and really, there's so much more to share with you all, and we're eager to have a chance to sit down and talk with you, but not by accident that we're doing this this recording uh, today because we want you to be able to take advantage of the discounts that are available only through February 28th of 22. And I would also just mention that the itineraries are open and available not just throughout 22, but 2023 and even into 2024 right now. So the Galapagos Islands are on your bucket list and if they aren't, they should be. <laughs> uh, please. Talk to our agents here at Magic, and we'll get you set up for having a wonderful vacation to look forward to. And I think that's all we have to share with everybody. I don't know if there's any questions. Do you see uh, any questions in the, in the um, chat box? I think that um, there are some people just wanting to know about the um, the wildlife calendar, and I think that you said that you'd be sending that out, right? Yep, yep. we have a lot of information to share with you, and that's one piece that uh, will be out in the uh, email to you uh, as we speak. Um, and then um, I do have another question about the, the different ships. Um, with the different ships, does the rate change? Yeah, and again, that will be something we can talk about one-on-one -on -one with you when we sit down, depending on your needs and your priorities and when you can travel. But different ships on different dates have different rates <laughs> to uh, kind of put that in uh, one little snippet. <laughs> That's a great way to say it. <laughs> yeah. The other thing too, you mentioned about the clothing, Amanda, and and folks kind of want to talk a lot about that when we sit down with them one on one. And it's great to know it's all casual, so you can don't have to have a jacket and tie or fancy dress or high heels or anything like that. Um, and it's really great because your luggage is a little bit more limited too when you're flying over to Valtra. I believe it's forty four pounds uh, per person plus a fifteen pound carry-on bag, but they also recommend light colored clothing, you know, uh, neutrals, tans and whites, and, you know, not a lot of bright colors because that can attract um, maybe more bees or, or different insects and things like that. So again, lots of tips, lots of hints and things that we can offer at Magic Cruises and Tours. We look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you very much for sharing your time with us today. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye.